Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He is Emmanuel. It's Him who is in our midst, ever building His house, you know, ever raising up His family of sons that He has declared that uh, He said He would have. Amen. Like, it's... It's really, really a cool thing that uh, he said it. He'll do it. I don't have to rely on my abilities any longer. I just have to rely upon him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, I still do believe this. The highest order of anything is when you become it. Worship, the highest order of worship is when it just flows out of your life. It's not in your head. It just comes alive through your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I, I was doing some reading this week, you know, um, <laughs> between Sunday and today. I'm always doing some reading, but uh, I... I um, just started reading some verses and then somebody shared, a, you know, they, they said to me they wanted me to read, you know, a certain uh, chapter in the Bible. So I started doing that and, and it was quite interesting. Uh, it it kind of went along with what I had been reading. So I kind of want to share that a little bit. I've, I still am, I really do believe this, that God is looking for a people who will become the highest order. They will release the fullness of who He is, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. This is why Paul said, rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. You know, if you really think about it, uh, the promise, you know, the promised seed, like everybody knows what Isaac means, his name means, right? It literally means Laughter. It wasn't just because Sarah and Abraham laughed because they were old and were going to have a baby. They actually saw something even beyond that. What tickled them on the inside, which came to the outside, was that they saw a release of that life of who God is in theirs, and they couldn't help but be happy. Happy, happy, happy. Happy. Glory to God. A rejoicing. And so this is what God is. He, he literally, I, I still love this, you know. Um, he, he's after a people who will release the fullness of his joy. That our joy would be full. Full. Can't bring me down. No matter how hard you try. Like, this is the coolest thing about Jesus, right? Like, no matter what, this is what the Bible says. He said, he, he said because of the joy that was set before him, he endured everything at that cross. And because he did, we can read in the Bible all the New Testament, like, and we can, we can even understand all the stories that... Uh, history has given us about what the early church and through the generations what they went through was so that they could release the joy of the Lord which will strengthen our lives the fullness of joy glory to God so if you turn with me well I read this the other day let's see, we can you don't have to go there if you don't want it. it's it's fine Psalms 45, verse 6, it says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. It's right. Righteous. Thou lovest, verse 7, thou lovest righteousness, and you hate wickedness. Wickedness, right? Like, seriously, wickedness is just our own thinking, right? It really is. 
Like, I'm going to do things my way, choose my way, do what I want, no matter what anybody thinks. This is wickedness. The church has made wickedness out there, but God made it very clear. The man of sin sets himself up in the temple thinking that he is God and says, I'll make my own decisions for myself. Righteousness. God loves righteousness. And he hates. He hates wickedness. When Jacob and Esau were coming out of their mama before they were even born and did anything, he said, Jacob I love and Esau I hated. Oh, wait, God can't act that way. He most certainly can Because the thing about Esau was the characteristic of what he would live and express. Even have a cry to get his birthright back. But was not able to do it. It was the same cry Judas had when he offered up Jesus. And the Bible says he repented. Wait, I thought God always is just looking for people to repent. Just, no, no. It has to do with a heart change that you cannot, will not go back. And this is why, this is why really, we must strive to enter in because unfortunately not everybody will. And the Bible says some must enter in. See, if you know a thing, And do it not, the Bible says, to you, it is a sin. You come up short. You miss the mark. So the highest order, I'm going to preach this someday. Like I I went through, you know, it's really good. The genosko, the epigenosko, and I, I can't even think of what the Greek word is, but it's when you become the knowledge. Like you're not building it up any longer. Like epi, like not, like, like this. Genosko means... You know, genosko means knowledge in the Greek, right? And epigenosko, upon, it's building up, it's getting bigger. But when you become, you know what that means? Because you are, you will do. Jesus, help me. No, Jesus, help me. Because the seriousness of what God is doing in our lives is the magnitude is far greater than our everyday existence of just making a living and satisfying our souls. But it's about bringing the fullness of the kingdom into plain view where you cannot be hid any longer. No man lights a candle. What does it say? The spirit of man is what? The candle of the Lord. And God lit our candle. He lit mankind's candle, right? The candle went out when Adam fell. Right? A mighty wind blew it out. But Jesus, the Christ, like the first sacrifice in Moses' church, They didn't light it. God came down and did it. And God came down. I'm not waiting for him to get here any longer. He already came down. And what God is now doing, he is marrying our soul to be so one with his spirit that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because every bit of his nature, every bit of his character, every bit of his authority, his honor, his glory. Everybody wants glory. Oh, you know what the shininess of glory is? You go all the way back to a man named Joshua with about three million people all marching in unity. They're not asking what to do what they should do, they already know what it's going to be. Yeah. Grow in grace and the knowledge of the Lord. Grow until we come into the fullness 
of what God is after in our lives. Okay, so turn with me. Oh, I already read that. So he loves righteousness. He hates wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee. We know that these are psalms and they're messianic. They point directly to Jesus. And if they point directly to Jesus, it directs pointly, po- directly points to you and I. Why is that? Because where is Jesus? Like, I, I bet almost everybody would say, he's in me. Because the incarnation of Jesus Christ is still fulfilling his word. Manifesting his word in the flesh. So count it all joy when you fall into every little situation that gets your... So that he can express the fullness of his glory until we all come into the unity of the faith. We thought that was all about a certain kind of doctrine. No. That's all about a person and what he is all about. Not my faith, his faith. Not my page, his page. Not my words, his words. Not my spirit, his spirit. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. He poured that anointing and it begins on top of the head and it flows all the way down to the entire body. And there's a church world like the woman with an issue of blood just waiting to be delivered because judgment, the decree, begins where? In the church folks first. Because they already think they know. Because of knowledge. I always remember Sister Clarice Fluid, and I've never forgotten this. I know how to do push ups, I know they're good for me, but I just don't do very You know why most of us don't do exercise? I hate exercising. It's because we're lazy. Yeah, sluggards. Don't read the Proverbs if you're lazy. Just don't do it. Consider the ant. That was today, right? Consider the ant. No leader. No one to tell them what to do. And yet, they gather when the time is is good so that when times get bad winter they'll be prepared not because they just have the food but because of what's inside of them can sustain them through the seasons oh, hallelujah so psalms turn with me here to psalms psalms 72 Psalm 72, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I love this, and I don't have time to go through all this, and I'm I'm just gonna just gonna share what I what I really, you know, I'm just sharing what God showed me and what God's after. And Psalms 72, verse 1, a psalm for Solomon. So this is David. He has a psalm for his son. Give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. So this is really about a father and a son. God is after a father and a son heart. A father and a son relationship. I know a lot of people had a hard time when I said this before, but this is still the reality no matter what anybody tells you. I don't even care what you think or I think. The highest relationship in God's kingdom is a father and a son. It's not a husband and a wife. It's not a king and a queen. It's a father and a son. How do I know that? Because he made us all sons. He put the spirit of the Son 
into our hearts, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. It's the highest relationship. And without that high relationship, you and I will never find any pure joy. It'll be all, always temporary and short-lived. You'll need a moment. A trip to Disney World. You'll need something to stir you instead of just being wherever you are. I wish you were all like me. Accept these bonds. That you wouldn't retaliate with your mouth when you aren't getting your own way. This is what God says to us all the time. Literally, in tabernacles, Jesus stood there and they said, he said to him, look, don't you see I can let you go? And he says, no. I'm not in your hands. Don't you see we're about to kill you? No, 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 no. You're not doing it. My father is. And by the way, well, the reason he's doing that is because he loves me. And he's about to release all of his vengeance on me. How great is his love? All of his wrath. So that he could hear the cry of the Adamic, of mankind. In his only begotten son. And now Jesus is bringing forth, I and the children are for signs and wonders. Yeah. Paul, you've gone mad. You're crazy. You lost your mind. We better go down and get Jesus. Remember Mama and his brothers? We better go get Jesus. He's insane. That's what they said. Now, can you imagine that? Can you imagine your mama telling you you're insane? No, seriously. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. The one that she knew she got pregnant by the Holy Ghost from. She thought he was crazy. Oh, Rabba Shatarabakaya. Hallelujah. A king and a king. A father and a son. And this is what he says here. He says, He shall judge thy people with righteousness and thy poor with judgment. Ah, I love them. I love them words. I love the fact that he, he's going to judge, right? He's going to rule. The word literally means rule. I want Jesus to rule every area of my life, every thought. Like, a, uh, like bring everything into subjection. And, and, and I know we, we've, we've mistakenly used the word judgment. It actually has two sides of the coin, right? It's, it's a verdict, favorably or unfavorably. Guess who gets to make that decision? <laughs> yeah. Oh, hallelujah. But the truth of the matter is he already made a verdict. The Bible says, we just read it just a, like a couple of times back. Remember this? It, look, we've already been reconciled to God. But then he turns around and says, be ye reconciled to God. Well, what's that mean? I thought I was. Yes, and I need more. And the mountains shall bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. Now turn with me to Isaiah. Let's see, where do I want to go? Isaiah, let's go to 32 first. So verse 2 of chapter 72 says, He shall judge thy people with righteousness and thy poor with judgment. Isaiah 32 verse 1 says, Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness. Jesus reigns in righteousness. Jesus still reigns in righteousness. Where is he reigning from? His throne. Where is his throne? The most holy place. Where is the most holy place? Emmanuel. 
God with us. God in us. God didn't want to live anywhere else. The whole myth that he lives up over there and he sits on a throne over there, all that over there is not the glory of God. The glory of God is to be revealed through a people who know how to release all of his joy. Listen to this. Listen. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness and princes shall rule in judgment. Verse 17 says, And the work of righteousness shall be peace. The kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but it's righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. And the work of righteousness shall be peace. In other words, the fruit of of uprightness is peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are the sons of God. They're the sons of God. We us. Greek word, we us. Not little children. Not young men. Fathers. The writer of the Hebrews said this, you have 10,000 teachers. People are enamored by peoples. Church folks. Knowledge turns them on. But you know what a father is? Stable. Upright. Pillars. They don't move. They're not persuaded by emotions because they move by spirit. Oh, hallelujah. They're a house built on the rocks. And when the wind comes and the rain and all the water and all the elements, guess what? They stand. They don't fall. Hallelujah. And the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. Forever. No, no, listen, forever. Can't be undone. See, this is the thing I love about what God's doing in our lives. No, seriously, this is what he's doing. He's doing a work that cannot be undone. We want God to... Lickety split, and he says, no, I'm building for eternity. He said, I am building up so it can never be torn down. He already tore down, and he built it up. And now he's building it in a people that it cannot be torn down, ever. No serpent in the garden can ever tear this down again. Serpent in the garden. I believe the devil is real. But he's not a little red animal with horns and a pitchfork. Uh, no, he's just an adversary. And he can come in any form. And the thing that we must be careful about the most is what Paul warned us about in Corinthians. He says, beware of the subtleties of the serpent, the devil, who beguiled Eve with flattery. And his ministers, they work righteousness. So you can know to do good and you can do what's right, but that doesn't mean our heart is in it at all. King Amaziah did everything that was right in the sight of the Lord but not with a perfect heart. It wasn't complete. It wasn't full. It wasn't right. It wasn't peaceful. Because when the heart is right, the effect will be peace. It'll produce. It'll produce peace. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, verse uh, in, in chapter uh, Psalm 72, 3, 
It said, the mountains shall bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. Turn with me to Isaiah 52. Hallelujah. I'm preaching this because I love this right here. What's coming out of the mountains? It's going to bring peace. What mountain are we talking about? Mount Zion. No other mountain. By the way, it is statistically the highest mountain ever. It just, be t- just depends on where you're measuring, in the earth or in the heavens. Mount Zion. Well, hallelujah, here we go. Isaiah 52, verse 7, did I tell you that? Okay, here we go. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth, what? That bringeth good tidings. Hallelujah. Oops, sorry about that. I just hit the wrong thing here. That bringeth, uh, um, oh, Dale. <laughs> this is what happens when you, they put a little arrow next to the thing. Here we go. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him. Now, I don't have time. I'm not going to take time tonight. If we go to Romans uh, chapter 10, we find out that it turns the him. How beautiful are the feet of him. You know this already. It becomes the feet of them. In other words, the only walk that you have is to release the righteousness, the peace, and the joy of the Holy Ghost or through the Holy Ghost. Therefore, expressing the kingdom. No, the kingdom. In other words, you will understand that you have complete rule in your life. Because the ruler, Christ, is alive. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bring good tidings, that publish peace, that bring good tidings of good, That publish salvation. I love this word salvation. It literally means deliverance. It speaks of wholeness. Spirit, soul, and body. The deep end of the waters are what? Brethren, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. It's the deep waters. But listen. Corruptible must put on incorruption. Mortal must put on immortality. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will not fulfill the lusts or the desires of the natural realm. I was just reading this week again. And like, like seriously, if you want a real wake-up call, read this. I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Look, they were fighting over whether they should eat meat that was sacrificed to idols. And this is what Paul said, don't worry about it. He says, because the day's coming, God's going to do away with the belly and the food. Because there will be no more need. I I know I'm I'm bridging a big gap here. There will be no more need for the sun or the moon to light the city. Because their bellies will be full of who is inside of them. They ate the whole lamb, the the head, the legs, and the inward parts. And the only thing that could gush out of their side, right? Remember Jesus on the cross? Blood and water. The life and the word that publishes good tidings, peace, the goodness of the Lord. It's the only thing that can come out. Because when you pierce him, the only thing that can flow is watch this, can I say this, is what you know, or who you know. I I don't mean knowledge now, I mean what you became. Yeah, here we go. Look at, that saith unto Zion, hello Zion, it's time for Zion to wake up, if we went back to verse 1, thy God reigneth. And here we go, I'm all done, I'm really all done for the night. Thy watchman shall lift up the voice, 
With the voice together, they shall sing. Look, you have two ways to sing. Hang your harps on the willow trees. Isn't that what they said? Oh, sing us the songs of Zion. And they're like, oh, how can we? Our harps are hanging on the willow trees. Right? Or you can sing like Paul and Silas down in the prison after taking a beating because the only thing that could come out of them was what they were, full of praise and worship. It was their lifestyle. It was who they were. It wasn't just something they did. It wasn't an attachment to the brain. It was a reality in the life. They published good news. They sang the song of the Lord. Literally, they didn't sing because something went well with them. Oh, they sang because something went well with them. (laughs) Ah, with joy, draw water from the well. He's the secret, the sacred secret. Thy watchman shall lift up the voice with the voice of the voice together. I love that too. Unity. Unity. I think I wrote it today, right? Is that not true? True glory is unity and true unity is the glory of God. How do you know when God glorifies His people? They obey the commandment to love one another. And no greater love has anyone that He laid down His life for His friend. Don't turn God's grace into lasciviousness, though. To use God's word to manipulate to get what you want. It's not God. Because the only thing he did in that verse, what he said, he described what his love was. If you see someone in need and you don't give, need. The joy of the Lord is our strength. A people will sing. Sing the songs of Zion. Not from a defeated realm or capture, but from a realm of overcoming because God has overcome and He is victorious right now. With the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see. Look at this, Corey. I... To I. When the Lord shall bring Zion again. It really is Ephesians 4. The fivefold ministry bringing a people into a place, unity of the faith, unto the stature. of the fullness of Christ. It's oneness. It's the highest order in God's kingdom, being one with the Father. Amen? Amen. Well, praise God. Let's stand. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Joel 3.18 says this, And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine. Oh, hallelujah. New wine came down, didn't it? So we're in that day. New wine. And the hills shall flow with milk. The richness of the Lord. We have the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't need to wait for Him. He's already here. And all the rivers of Judah. Judah. Celebration. Overcomer. Dominion. Who's king? God. Where does he live? Inside of us. And all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters, and a fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord, and shall water the valley of Shittim. The whole picture has always been every temple, everything, has been about a life that flows out of a people. 
Lord, I thank You for Your Word. Oh, I thank You for Your Word, O oh God, from the top of the mountain. Even let it run down to the bottom, O oh God. The reason Jesus went up in the mountain every day to pray is because He knew He was coming down. Renewed with all the goods to release into all the humanity so that He could become the reality in fullness, not just in part of all of our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Oh, hallelujah.